Okay, so we're back, back with another uh, episode, and uh, today I actually have a co-host for the first time, uh, Marcel Minga. So Marcel, thank you for uh, hopping along for uh, this ride. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> It was, I hope it's it 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 hard. I don't know if my brain uh, will work. It's six o'clock. <laughs> so uh, I, I I already have problems with my brain and with my English. So okay. so now you can add also this uh, this hard uh, time. Okay. So I hope I, I hope uh, I I will be useful <laughs> in the conversation somehow. <laughs> well, we we'll forgive you. <laughs> And uh, so today we're going to discuss what is probably the most uh, blatant, the most uh, ob obvious, the most in-your-face uh, thing that they're doing to us, <laughs> the, the most uh, uh, even hateful uh, experiment that uh, we are being subjected to and that it seems to be the most uh, difficult uh, thing also to make to make people uh, realize uh, and understand and i'm talking about uh, the phenomenon referred to as uh, geoengineering uh, which is known in um, more conspiratorial uh, circles as uh, you know camp trailing camp trades uh, it has a whole uh, sort of different type of names And we have the uh, right man to <laughs> uh, talk to us about this, and uh, he's a very uh, one of the most uh, outspoken uh, people uh, activists on this issue, Matt Landman. So, Matt, uh, thank you very much for for being here and talking to us. Thank you very much for having me on. Okay, so uh, basically, um, you give your introduction probably a million times. <laughs> Uh, let me see if I can uh, get it correctly, uh, sum, sum it up uh, correctly. So you were, basically you have a uh, whole uh, different, you held uh, all different kinds of, you know, office jobs. Then you uh, wound up in a, in a in an organic farm and that's kind of where uh, things sort of started to, it, it has sparked uh, this whole uh, consciousness about this, about the problem that you are, that you are, um, trying to trying to fight right now and trying to uh, make people uh, understand so uh, is it correct pretty much uh yeah um i've i've walked a lot of different paths and worked a lot of different jobs i've worked in finance and banking and even the stock market but when i finally uh, got out of school uh, i went to film school and then i also uh, went to school for my master's in business administration with a focus in strategic sustainability so when i got out of school i finally uh, literally got grounded and got a job on an organic farm where i witnessed weather modification um, i never knew anything like that existed and where i lived in northern california in the west coast of the united states the traditional jet stream, the moisture pattern would come off the Pacific Ocean and come across the United States. And it was this, this system that would feed the moisture for the entire United States where I lived, right on the ocean. And this system was being manipulated with the geoengineering, the chemtrails. What was especially obvious for me was the was the difference in times that the planes would arrive. So there would be this lull where no air traffic would exist for even weeks. So there would be weeks of no planes in the sky. No planes. Okay? Yeah. And, yeah, then, one day, yeah. 12, and then one day 12 planes showed up and they crisscrossed the sky with these lines in the sky on the edge of a storm pattern, mind you. And then the storm came and it didn't drop any rain when we were expecting rain. And it all started to kind of unfold for me as I started to question what was going on. Yeah, so it's basically what, uh, I mean, I, I myself have noticed this here. So, so you have days where, you know, you have perfectly, you know, clear sky or sort of natural uh, appearing, uh, natural looking clouds. And then you have uh, this uh, air traffic that it just uh, all of a sudden becomes, it seems they, that they, they become so hectic uh, all of a sudden. And they release this uh, all these trails. So, 
uh, it's pretty much what we experience here also. And uh, uh, it's interesting uh, about you, the fact that uh, you're now in, um, in Arizona. Uh, and can you explain uh, why you ended up, being, uh, you ended up going, going there? Okay, so I was living in Canada. And I moved down to Arizona because of the official experiment in Tucson, Arizona, which is just on the Mexico-United States border in the desert. There is an experiment to normalize and officially launch geoengineering as a solution, a public, a public solution. So the powers that be, which is David Keith and Bill Gates, it's a very, very small group of globalists. They have come together to propose to the world that they have a fix for climate change, a fix for, geo, for um, sorry, global warming, and they're calling it geoengineering. And it looks exactly like what conspiracy theorists have seen in the sky for 20, 30 years, which is termed chemtrails. So the experiment is to spray the skies with different nanoparticulate aerosols, such as aluminum, such as sulfur, and then to see which chemicals work best to dim the sun. They want to whiten the skies and dim the sun and see if they can um, mimic a volcanic eruption. So it's being launched through the media and being normalized, and even a dozen new, 12 new cloud types have been introduced through the media to show the world that these, to, to, to trick the world into thinking that these clouds have always existed, but now they're giving names. Well, all 12 variations of these new clouds are all different variations of geoengineering. So this experiment is unfolding. It was, there was a public announcement that it was to happen this year, but now the researchers are saying that they don't know the official date. I have a feeling that they'll do it and then tell the world that they did it and it was successful. And now look, we have the solution to climate change. We're going to spray the skies. So what they want to do is mimic a Mount Pinatubo effect is what they're calling it. Mount Pinatubo was a volcano that erupted in the Philippines in 1991. So much dust went in the atmosphere that the global mean temperature supposedly declined just over one degree Celsius. So all that white dust went in the atmosphere and if you ask me, it probably created a greenhouse effect. It probably created global warming. But either way, they claim that the sunlight was bouncing off of the sulfuric dust from the volcanic eruption going back into space and that there was a cooling effect. And so science wants to mimic a volcanic eruption. So they're calling it a Mount Pinotubo effect. They want to mimic that clouding effect by spraying the skies with aluminum everywhere on earth all at once to whiten the skies, to take away the blue skies for years to come. Okay, they don't know when they'll stop. They actually say once they start, that if they stop, it will be catastrophic. Okay, so no stopping. So once they officially start and they whiten our skies, we won't see blue skies ever again, and neither will the next generation. So it's, it's, the, it's the most daunting um, most important thing facing humanity, in my opinion. So if this experiment, if and when this experiment unfolds, then the normalization process will be in full effect and the media will be able to tell us that here we have the solution, you're welcome, we're going to be doing this and it's okay and it'll be right there in the public's eye and then the debate, well hopefully there will be a debate, but then the debate will be out in the public in, in the open and it will no longer be behind closed doors as it has been yeah well and uh, yeah because uh, let's keep in mind that even though they are saying well we are experimenting as if it's going on right now they have been doing this for you know how long now probably they're experimenting with this since the the, the 30s the the 40s something like that exactly in my film franken skies the timeline, the very beginning of the film, it starts off with the chronology and it shows historically when the research really began. And it did, um, through the military industrial complex, it did begin in around the 30s. Weather modification, as we know it, it began with Professor Hatfield in 1915 in San Diego, California. He built a tower roughly 35 feet tall and sprayed the skies and made it rain in 1915. Imagine that. <laughs> I mean, 
that's just uh well uh, what could go wrong i mean we we're going we're going to have a 24/7 uh, volcanic eruption worldwide <laughs> so <laughs> non stop so i mean, it just uh, that's just you know awesome and uh marcel uh, if you no oh, feel free to uh hop in in the discussion uh, when you want to do you have do i have something to 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 say to ask yeah no first first of all uh uh you are in arizona where uh one of my uh great uh people like that uh, talk uh, uh things like this like uh, like they want us to to say conspiracy stuff uh mr cooper who who they killed uh william cooper no he lived in arizona so So lately I I've been watching uh, uh very uh, much the the radio shows that he made in the uh, early 2000 uh, where he talked uh, uh, of many things but uh, I I don't know maybe somehow he he was uh, he was not uh, he thought that Kentrates wasn't uh, wasn't something uh, real uh i don't know if you have have you ever watched the he, or listened to his show before they kill him um i i'm familiar with his stuff and uh, be, behold a pale horse is is an is a masterpiece i've never heard him comment on the kim trails did he talk about it i i remember the lately i heard the in one show that uh uh but maybe you know it, it was just the, the beginning and and he had the uh, because you know the internet is full of uh of information that they put there just to confuse people you know there are lots of uh, uh lots of uh theories of any kind so so that people are are confused you know and uh and Kim Trades for example it's it's uh, it's it's unbelievable uh the, the fact that uh i mean in the humans may, maybe in the past people have tried for for example to to poison one another in the wars but uh when when you when they do it with this kind of technology that they have today with uh, from the plane and uh, and everything it it looks something so unbelievable that uh, that is it is almost uh, you, you look like like crazy when when you try to to talk uh, about uh, uh camp trials sometimes uh, an italian word slips but only me and francesco knows where <laughs> no it's so, well it's like it's like no the... i i would i was just uh, going to say so may, maybe he was uh, he wasn't sure maybe he thought uh, this uh, camp trial uh, that people w- were seeing already in the early 2000 when he was making his show he he thought that it was another attack from uh, the elite you know uh, that they were putting this uh, uh, these things about camp trials just to confuse us and to make us look like crazy if we talk about this you know that they are they are spraying and 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 they are they want to kill us you know it sounds s- stupid no so i remember in, in the beginning when i first he- heard this uh it was maybe 2005 2006 i don't remember and the first thing that came to my mind was uh, if I, if they are are doing this they are they also are getting the the poison so it was uh i had doubts but uh, it looked kind of crazy you know so the uh, i imagine for people that never do any research what how can, could it sound how outlandish could, could this sound so so may, maybe cooper uh, wasn't uh, wasn't sure and didn't have enough data back then uh, remember he died in 2001 so uh chemtrails may maybe have started even uh, before that but the information they had they had make him made him think maybe that uh, that, that it was uh, something uh, a psyop sort of uh, sort of something a, like this okay. 
but mm-hmm. for, for for the rest, I find him very uh, 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 a, a good guy, in my opinion. Yeah, he's incredible. And and at the time, it was all very new. And for and in Arizona, especially in the desert skies, it it didn't it wasn't as prevalent as it is today. It was definitely not, and and especially in the nineties and the two thousands. But you're exactly right when you say that people, the first thing, the first reaction that people have is, why would they do that to ourselves? Why would they spray themselves? People, when they first come across something so big, because messing with our air, messing with our weather, um, spraying the skies with this elaborate conspiracy, it's it's so big, it's hard for people to really grasp it. And to, in order for the public to really sink their teeth into something and believe it, they need to know the who, what, why, where, when, and how. And when you're running through all those scenarios, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Everyone says that, no, they wouldn't do that to themselves. And my answer to that is that they know what's being sprayed. They know what's being sprayed and where it's being sprayed and when. So if they know all those answers, they can easily protect themselves. The elite, they have the filters, the air filters, they have the protective, they probably even have the the antidote that they can take. And then earlier you were mentioning the uh, misinformation, disinformation of the media, how good the media is at controlling the minds of the public. And it's, it's, an, it's incredible. They've done such a good job. So firstly, the media, as far as the United States goes, the media is owned by five companies. And that, those five companies are owned just by a, a family or two. The, the information that the United States, the North America gets, it's all controlled. The, the local news agencies, they pretend like they're, that they're telling a local news story. They're reading a script that they were handed nationwide to build a mental construct to control the way people think about certain things. So the geoengineering, the chemtrails, they have simultaneously convinced the public that geoengineering is an amazing scientific achievement and should be potentially used to dim the sun to save us from global warming. Global warming in in it of itself being a massive conspiracy, a massive hoax, okay? And then at the same time, they demonized this word that they created. The word chemtrails was created by this military-industrial complex that is pushing this disinformation campaign. And they've hired, they've hired pretend activists. They've hired, to, which is called controlled opposition. They've hired disinformation a- agents to be crazy people spreading this word of chemtrails. They're spraying us. They're going to kill us. Everyone run and hide. And they've created this scenario where the word chemtrails is now this trigger word where people laugh. People laugh because the media, the television, the video games, the children's programming, the television shows, the movies, everything has normalized it to being normal and also made it so that the conspiracy theorist is 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 framed as being a minority which is not even true a lot of people are waking up and they don't want anybody to know that and then also um this this very uh side opinion that's that's basically a crazy person so yeah. l- l- just just to close the my, my thought I, I was thinking uh that uh, they have normalized, for example, something that we even think about this, but it, it's, uh, it has maybe a worse effect than chemtrails, which is uh, the food that we eat, for example. It full, it's full of, of pesticide, of, of any kinds of uh, toxic uh, stuff that they put. If they uh, take something from the supermarket today and, and uh, analyze it, they they get they see that uh, there are all all kinds of uh, toxic uh, uh, material that they use when they grow the food. You know, uh, not not talking, uh, for example, about GMOs. They are they are also something bad. That, uh, for example, uh, uh, where you live in America, they they have uh, normalized it so that people uh, don't even think about it. Uh, for example, they with TV just show you people 
not caring of, uh, of what they put in their their body when they eat. You know, uh, GMOs uh, are good for you, Marcel. <laughs> yeah, of course, but uh, you know, somehow I I don't feel to eat uh, GMOs today. Uh, but I will try. I'll try. I'll I'll trust you. But uh, but uh, what I'm saying is this: that uh, uh, they are you know posing humanity in uh, different uh, 